What we need, and the word's been used many times during the course of the past few days, is not evolution, but a revolution in education. This has to be transformed into something else. Warana Park is influenced by a number of contemporary educators. Ken Robinson, Stephen Heppel and Zhang Zhao are three that have left their imprint on our school. I uh, basically embedded a computer into a wall of a slum. So at the end of it, we concluded that groups of children can learn to use computers and the internet on their own, irrespective of who or where they were. Recently, the work of Sugatra Mitra has been prominent in our discussions. His hole-in-the-wall research has not only raised questions about the appropriateness of formal education as we know it, but has also highlighted the capabilities of children of different ages, some of whom are illiterate, to work collectively in order to learn without the assistance of a teacher. The second thing he said was that if children have interest, then education happens. The school believes that Sugata Mitra's research supports our pedagogical focus as outlined in our raison d'etre, along with the strong emphasis placed on collaborative learning across the school. Central to our school's raison d'etre is the belief that children are born with an innate drive to make sense of their environment. As such, they are born autonomous learners. This is reflected in the social constructivist nature of most learning, particularly learning that occurs outside of school. Such learning takes place as children and adults make sense of their environment or acquire skills relevant to their environment. More often than not, it occurs in a social setting without the assistance of a teacher figure. The collaborative nature of learning at Warana Park is reflected in the numerous opportunities created for students to work together, along with the use of groups of teachers in each of our year-level learning communities. Students working together allow less confident students to scaffold their learning with the support of their peers, while avoiding harmful teaching practices that pit student against student, thus creating winners and losers. The use of a team of teachers to create learning communities with larger groupings of students recognises the need to differentiate the curriculum in order to cater for the ever varying needs of students. It also allows students to form closer relationships with teachers who share similar learning styles or possess interests, passions or skills pertinent to their needs. Team teaching also allows teachers to model the collaborative practices they wish to pass on to their students. Collaborative approaches to learning allow students to share their skills and passions with other students, to adopt the role of mentor or teacher, and in doing so, deepen their own learning as they seek to explain their beliefs to others. Can any of the pieces jump over the, any other of the pieces? No, only the knight can jump over other pieces. Sugata Mitra's research with self-organised learning environments highlights the innate potential of students to organise and accept responsibility for their own learning. For this to occur, teachers must be prepared to negotiate the learning with students and encourage students to take responsibility for their learning. Student-led reporting, student parliament and the autonomous learning program for Year 5 and 6 students, featured in other videos, are products of the philosophical beliefs underpinning self-organised learning environments. With the electronics day, um, I wonder if we can have like a second day where people can like go Wi-Fi and verse each other. In our committees, we're separated into different parts of the environment. So some of us have been working on recycling, composting and other things to do with the environment. 
and in our groups we've um, researched about how to do these things and how, how these things can help us in our world. Collaborative approaches to learning are also fundamental to the very fabric of our society. Politically and socially, we need our students to use reason instead of might to resolve their problems. To be able to listen and consider views different to their own. If I could change, yeah, um, I'll change the gangs because they're destroying all the, our community and uh, destroying our houses and um, they're hurting people and, yeah. Indeed, the future sustainability of our world will depend on the ability of experts in different fields of learning reaching solutions that embrace the totality of man's knowledge if we are to avoid solving one problem only to create another problem.